In this video, we're going to talk about seven cloud engineering questions. My name is Kevin Wei. I was an enterprise product manager, and I'm here to help you land your dream job in tech. This video should serve as a refresher, especially if you study system design. Question one, when should an organization use a hybrid cloud architecture? Hybrid cloud helps businesses maintain security while decreasing workload. With a hybrid cloud approach, businesses can choose whether they want to store data in the cloud or on-premise. If a business wants better security for some of their data, they could keep private servers locally. And for more resource-intensive needs, they could use the public cloud. Before we jump into the next question, if you enjoy these tech interview videos, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. We put a lot of effort into these videos with the goal of helping as many people as possible. So your like or comment is really helpful to show your support. All right, question two, what are load balancers? Load balancers distribute traffic across servers. The advantages of using a load balancer include improved performance, reduced response time, and increased availability. With load balancers, you can distribute traffic more evenly across servers. You can reduce the time it takes a website to handle a request, and you can increase the availability of an application. Even if one or more servers are down, the app can still run by directing traffic to the remaining servers. Question three, what's the difference between horizontal scaling and vertical scaling? Horizontal scaling involves adding new servers to handle more traffic. Vertical scaling involves adding resources to existing servers to handle more traffic. Question four, what's the difference between SQL and NoSQL? The main difference between SQL and NoSQL is that SQL databases are based on a relational model. In contrast, NoSQL databases are based on a non-relational model. SQL databases are easy to use and understand. They have a tabular format and are ACID compliant. They can be scaled vertically, but you need to implement sharding by yourself manually. NoSQL databases, on the other hand, can be more difficult to use and understand. They support a dynamic schema for unstructured data. However, they are much easier to scale as they offer horizontal scaling and built-in sharding. An example of a SQL database is Amazon RDS. And an example of a NoSQL database is DynamoDB. Question five, what is database sharding? Database sharding or partitioning is a technique that splits a database into multiple smaller pieces called shards. Each shard contains a subset of the data and is stored on a separate server. Sharding helps you improve the performance, scalability, and availability of database applications. It's pre-built into NoSQL databases and can be manually implemented in SQL databases. Question six, what's the difference between authentication and authorization? Authentication is verifying a user's identity Authorization is granting access to a user who's already authenticated. For example, when you log on to a website, the website verifies your username and password. This is authentication. Once you're logged in, the website checks to see if you have permission to view the page you're trying to access. If you do, you're authorized to view it. If you don't, you're not authorized and you'll probably see an error message. Question seven. Can you upgrade or downgrade a system with near zero downtime? The answer is yes, and there are a few ways to do this. The two most popular options are to either use a blue-green deployment strategy or to use a canary release strategy. With a blue-green deployment strategy, you have two systems running, the one running the current version and one running the new version. With the help of a load balancer, you direct incoming traffic to the newer version, and eventually you can decommission the older version. With a canary release strategy, you slowly roll out the new version of the system to a small subset of users. Once you've verified and tested that the new version is working as expected, you can roll out the new version to all users. If tests don't go as expected, you can roll back any changes. And there you have it seven questions you should know for your cloud engineering interview. And for more tech interview prep content, Exponent has the best resources to help you ace your interview, including in-depth interview courses, private coaching, and a community of experts ready to help you prep for even the toughest questions. Go to tryexponent.com to become a member today. Thanks for watching.